dear students this is lecture number 2 on the topic refrigeration in the earlier lecture uh, we we discussed the air refrigeration vapor compression refrigeration and in the air refrigeration the thermodynamic cycle uh, was bell column and cycle and in the vapor compression refrigeration cycle uh, we discussed different uh, arrangements and we solved a few problems on the different types of vapor compression cycle and in this lecture we discuss the vapor absorption refrigeration system and the other refrigeration methods thermoelectric refrigeration method so the diagram it shows the simple vapor absorption refrigeration system with uh, water ammonia so here water is the absorbent and ammonia is the refrigerant you take for one minute and look at the components various components you have the generator condenser receiver tank expansion valve evaporator absorber pump if we compare the uh, simple vapor absorption system with the, the vapor compression system condenser receiver tank expansion valve evaporator these components are common and this compressor in the vapor compression system is replaced by the other three components generator absorber and the pump now how it works how the simple vapor absorption system is working what is the basic principle on the vapor absorption system we start from here outlet of the evaporator so the outlet of the evaporator is necessarily a vapor of refrigerant ammonia vapor this ammonia vapor it goes to the absorber in the absorber we have the water and the ammonia vapor is absorbed by the water and it will become the solution ammonia water solution ammonia solution and here the concentration of ammonia is very high so here uh, it is the vapor is leaving with a higher temperature we have to make we have to keep it in liquid state so you have a cooling coil which reduces the temperature always look always keeping the solution as ammonia water solution of high high concentration highly concentrated ammonia solution then the solution through the pump so here we have some pressurizing device so through the pump it goes to the generator so in the generator we have the heating element and which is heated the solution is heated so when the solution is heated ammonia water solution is heated ammonia evaporates and the vapor form of ammonia is formed vapor of vapor of ammonia vapor is formed and this vapor it goes to the condenser as the ammonia vapor is removed from the solution this becomes weak solution of ammonia and this is brought back to the cooling uh, absorber and it is recirculated so this ammonia vapor which is going to the condenser being condensed and it is converted into saturated liquid form of ammonia and collected in the tank it is expanded in the expansion valve and uh, the vapor absorbs the heat in the evaporator and is being recirculated so this is what the vapor absorption refrigeration system so the compressor is replaced by absorber generator and the pump in the system now you take the a practical vapor absorption system with ammonia and water so ammonia is the refrigerant and water is the absorbent what is the modification and the practical uh, vapor absorption system you have the absorber you have a heat exchanger and uh, analyzer and rectifier other components are very much similar you have the condenser receiver expansion valve evaporator everything is similar now once again we start from here outlet of the evaporator which is vapor ammonia vapor is leaving the evaporator the ammonia vapor is mixed with the water here so it is absorbed right it is absorbed 
and the solution ammonia solution is prepared ammonia solution is formed here this ammonia solution with the lower temperature higher concentration of ammonia it is going to the heat exchanger so through the pump it is going to heat exchanger in the heat exchanger it absorbs the heat energy from the other fluid another fluid so this is again the solution from here from the generator high temperature ammonia solution is flowing back flowing towards the absorber and it absorbs the heat energy and it goes to the analyzer analyzer this is generator and analyzer unit single unit so in the generator we have the electrical coil for heating so from electrical some heating system key is available here and uh, the vapor is formed vapor form vapor ammonia vapor is formed and ammonia vapor from the analyzer it goes to the rectifier what is the purpose of the analyzer here it is it is separating it is allowing only the ammonia vapor not the water particle so that is what the duty of the analyzer it is it is not permitting the water particle allowing only the ammonia vapor to leave the analyzer so the analyzer goes to the rectifier so despite the analyzer there are few particles water particle water vapor it may be escaping here so this is also removed here so it is completely rectified so the see the water particle even small quantity of water vapor is removed and it is brought back here only the ammonia vapor pure ammonia vapor is going to the condenser so the purpose of the analyzer rectifier is to prevent the flow of water to the rest of the refrigeration system refrigeration components so in the in the condenser the pure ammonia vapor is entering and it, we have a cooling system it is being condensed vapor is being condensed and uh, liquid ammonia is formed so saturated liquid is formed and it is being collected in the receiver tank so we expanded in the expansion valve then it goes to the evaporator so here the evaporator in the evaporator the refrigerant ammonia absorbs the heat energy and it becomes vapor and the vapor is recirculated again in the absorber so here the solution hot solution right high temperature ammonia solution weak solution is flowing towards the absorber via the heat exchanger which is which is heating the the outgoing the outgoing fluid so this is the vapor absorption refrigeration system with the water as the absorbent and ammonia is as the refrigerant then we have one more refrigeration system vapor absorption refrigeration system uh, water lithium bromide vapor absorption system so here water is the refrigerant and lithium bromide is the absorbent and you take a few seconds and look at the components various components here and if you see all the components in the vapor absorption system are arranged in two groups the first group is generator and condenser so this cylinder is a generator and condenser and another cylinder is absorber and evaporator so the this cylinder is operating within the cylinder we maintain a pressure of 55 mm of mercury and 40 degree celsius and here in the absorber evaporator cylinder we maintain a temperature of 4.5 mm of mercury and 1 degree celsius and uh, this lithium water bromide uh, vapor absorb water water lithium bromide uh, vapor absorption system is used for uh, producing chilled water so that is what the purpose to produce chilled water we are using the uh, the water lithium bromide vapor absorption system and uh, starting from here we have the steam coil and in the generator condenser we have the solution of lithium bromide and water so we have a steam coil here it heats the water solution water lithium bromide solution and water vapor is formed so the generator is producing water vapor and water vapor they are moving up in the cylinder so here we have the cooling water circuit this is condenser coil so when the water vapor falls on the condenser coil so the water is condensed and the condensate is collected in the uh, tray so this is refrigerant water tray so the refrigerant liquid water so it is flowing to the absorber through the expansion valve so here the expansion pressure is reduced and the low pressure uh, the water it goes water vapor it goes to the uh, this uh, this absorber and the evaporator unit 
and uh, as the as the refrigerant water flowing downward first it form it flows through the chilled water coil so this is the coil evaporator coil which is used to produce the chilled water using the water as the refrigerant so water here flowing here it absorbs the heat from chilled water coil and it, it, it becomes vapor and this vapor is mixed with the lithium bromide solution here and it is it is the bottom portion is acting as an absorber right so the absorber and uh, it is absorbed and it is flowing to the heat exchanger. so this is uh, a hot solution and it is flowing through the heat exchanger for heating the uh, incoming fluid and then it goes to the upper cylinder right so the the top cylinder is maintained at uh, 55 millimeter of mercury 40 degrees celsius and the bottom cylinder is maintained at 4.5 millimeter of mercury at 1 degree celsius so both are maintained at low temperature low pressure vacuum pressure particularly vacuum pressure so the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeter of mercury so it is less than 10 times of the atmospheric pressure so it is very low pressure vacuum pressure is maintained in the cylinder so we have to be very careful in maintaining the pressure and remember this is used for the water chilled water generation producing chilled water in a large plant so that is what the water lithium bromide vapor absorption system and now we compare the vapor uh, compare vapor compression and vapor absorption refrigeration systems so vapor absorption system we have a compressor the mechanical energy is supplied to a compressor using electric motor which is costly whereas in the case of vapor absorption system the heat energy is applied to the generator which is comparatively cheaper so here we are using a generator uh, which is comparatively so where the in the in the generator we are using heat energy for producing the vapor so which is comparatively cheaper Park load performance is poor in the case of vapor compression system the in the vapor absorption system system performance is not affected by the variation of load what is mean by park load performance the vaporous compression system is designed for a particular power output for the power power particular power for example one ton of refrigeration 1.5 ton of refrigeration when the system is operating lower than the design load design uh, uh, power right then it is called as part load per part load operation so the part load performance when the compressor when the vapor compression system is operated the part load condition the performance efficiency or cop will be less more chances of leakage of refrigerant because inside the refrigerant they are at a higher pressure so the chance of leakage of the refrigerant this is often noticed in the vapor compression system and there is no leakage there is no chance of leakage of any there is as there is no compressor there is no possibility of leakage of the refrigerant refrigerant char charging is easy and it is simple in the case of vapor compression system whereas here it is very difficult why it is easy here because we have a pressure difference we have a compressor so here there is no compressor so it is difficult to uh, charge the refrigerant wear and tear of the component is more because we have the compressor here we have wear and tear and mechanical losses will be there but here there is no wear and tear as there is no compressor so the components are uh, wear and tear of the components are less so this is the uh, difference between vapor compression system and vapor absorption refrigeration system and uh, the another refrigeration system method is thermoelectric refrigeration uh, thermoelectric cooling is the uses the peltier effect to create a heat flux between junction of two different types of material so peltier effect uh, is the basics for thermoelectric cooling and this effect commonly used in camping and portable cooler and for cooling electronic component and small instruments so the peltier effect or the thermoelectric refrigeration is used for cooling of electronic component and small instruments so the uh, general introduction applying a dc voltage difference across thermoelectric module an electric current will pass through the module and the heat will be absorbed from one side and released at the opposite side so one module phase uh, one module phase will be cooled while the opposite phase simultaneously heated on the other hand maintaining temperature difference between two junctions of the module the voltage difference would be generated across the module and the electric power is delivered the basic philosophy is so the the peltier 1834 the french watchmaker come part-time physicist 
Jean Ferdinand found that electric current would produce a temperature gradient at the junction of two dissimilar material. So this is the basic idea. Electric current. So this is also the basic uh, basic principle of thermocouple. Electric current would be produced would produce a temperature gradient at the junction of two dissimilar materials. That is the basics. Uh, the Peltier effect is the main contributor for to all thermo thermoelectric cooling application. It is responsible for the heat removal and the heat absorbance. It says that when electric current flow through flows across two dissimilar conductor. The junction of the conductor will either absorb or emit heat depending on the flow of the electric current. The heat produced or released at the junction is proportional to the input electric current. The constant of proportionality is called as Peltier coefficient. Look at this. This is material Y and this is material X. These are the two junctions. When you apply the voltage, there will be heat cooling, heat, heat absorption by this junction and heat rejection by this junction. So, this is the hot junction which is removing heat energy and this is the cold junction which is absorbing the heat energy. So, this is the effect, this is, this is the Peltier effect and uh, when, you, when, you, when you maintain the temperature difference, voltage will be generated. When you give the voltage, the heat will be uh, absorbed and the removed from the other unit. And uh, thermoelectric cooling of electronics, thermoelectric cooling devices are favorable in electronics cooling system because of their high reliability, flexibility in packaging and integration. Integ uh, packaging integration, low weight and ability to maintain low junction temperature even below the ambient temperature. And you look at this compound. So, this is the heat source. For example, this is the microprocessor of your computer. And this is the heat sink. So, this is the device. This is the component used for removal of the heat energy. So, in between, we have a TE module, thermoelectric refrigeration module, right? So, this is fixed between the, the heat source, that is microprocessor of your computer and the heat sink. So, now when you apply the voltage, so the heat source, so from here, the heat is given to the heat sink and the heat is removed. So, this is for the thermoelectric module, thermoelectric refrigeration module is used for the cooling of the electronic component. So, this is what the basics. What are the advantages? Effective, effective in spot cooling, environmental friendly, no chlorofluorocarbons, ability to heat and the cool, work in, work in any orientation, generate no electric noise, can power directly by PV, photo, photo, solar power also we can use, small size and light in weight, compact and reliable, steady state operation, no moving part on the fluids, durable and maintenance free, very long operational life. The disadvantages are able to dissipate limited amount of heat flux, lower COP as compared to vapor compression system. So, these are all the, uh, so, uh, suppose they ask a question on the thermoelectric refrigeration. So, you draw this diagram and uh, explain the effect, uh, explain the Peltier effect and uh, explain how the cooling system is working and you write what are all the advantages and the water is the disadvantage of the thermoelectric refrigeration system. And uh, so, in the vapor absorption of the compression system, we have the refrigerant, the fluid which is circulated inside the coil is called as refrigerant. And the refrigerant is a substance that absorbs heat through evaporation and loses it through the condensation in a refrigeration system. So, the a fluid which is capable of absorbing heat from the evaporator and removing the heat energy in the condenser, uh, losing the heat energy in the condenser is called as a refrigerant. And uh, the desirable properties of the refrigerant. The refrigerant what we select should have low boiling point, low freezing point, high saturation temperature, high latent heat of evaporation, non-toxicity, non-flammable and non-explosive, non-corrosiveness, it has chemical stability, low specific column of the vapor, low specific heat, high thermal conductivity, low viscosity, easy of locate, locating leakage by order, low cost and available, easily availability and the easy of handling. So, these are all the desirable properties. Uh, so, the low boiling point, why low boiling point? It should boil in the evaporator, it should easily evaporate in the evaporator low freezing point, it should not uh, solidify. 
as it flows through the uh, various components of the refrigerant system, it should not solidify. So, that is why low freezing point. High saturation temperature, so that you can absorb more amount of heat energy. High latent heat also will allow the refrigerant to absorb more amount of heat energy. Non toxicity, non flammable, non explosive, non corrosiveness. So, these are all the desirable properties uh, for effective functioning. So, uh, chemical stability. So, it should the chemical formula, chemical, they should not chemically react with the other component. Low specific volume, so this will influence the compressor. So, when you have low specific volume of the vapor, the compressor size will be less, smaller. Low specific heat, so it can absorb the heat energy. High thermal conductivity, it will easily transmit the heat energy. Low viscosity, it will easily flow. So, easy of locating the leakage. So, leakage, uh, if suppose leakage is occurring, so the smell, using the smell of the refrigerant, you should be able to identify the leakage and it should be cheap and easily available and easy of handling. So, these are all the refrigerant commonly used. So, air, ammonia, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide and freon. So, in the freon, we have freon 12 and freon 22. They are the very popular refrigerants. Uh, freon 12, F12 or R12, freon 22, F22 or R22. What is freon 12? Dichloro, dichloromethane and uh, monochloro, dichloromethane is the freon 22. So, the properties are given and uh, you know, actually uh, this is what the five different uh, uh, important commonly used refrigerant in the refrigeration system, vapor compression or vapor absorption refrigeration system. So, thank you. We'll meet again.